Hey there, Gregory Carlson for the Calculus Building. So let's just review all of the derivative tools we have in our toolbox. So we've got the power rule, we've got the addition and subtraction rule, got the uh, product rule, and the quotient rule. So we've got all these great things that are helping us, and this one might be the most powerful of all. And this is called the chain rule. And the chain rule is pretty simple to do, but it's kind of difficult to explain. So here's, I'm, I'm going to spend this video trying to explain it. And, if, and when we get to the examples in a minute, I think you're going to see that they're pretty easy to do, luckily. So the chain rule is useful when we have a composite function. So let's really quick review for a minute what a composite function is. So what this is, remember this, it's f of g of x. And so if, this is basically when I have a function f, and for the input of that function, I plug in the entire function g. So I, I evaluate g, I get a value, I plug that into f, and then f gives me a final value. So that's what a composite function is when we've plugged g into f. And so the question is, what would be the derivative of that? What would be the derivative of when we've plugged in a function into another function? And luckily, it's not that hard. It is f prime of g of x. So you just take the derivative of f with g plugged in, and then all you have to do is multiply that by the derivative of g. And that's the chain rule. So you take the derivative of f with g plugged in, and then you just multiply that by the derivative of g by itself. And that's it. So another way of writing that in Leibniz notation is dy dx is equal to. So say we want to find dy dx, but we don't have a way to relate y and x to each other. We have a third variable in the middle that we have to pass through to get from x to y. So here's another way to represent it. So you would have, let's say we have some variable t that we have to pass through to get from x to y. Then dy dx would equal dy dt times dt dx. So that's how you represent the chain rule. And you notice that on this one, these are kind of related rates. I can't compare y and x, but I can compare y and t and I can compare t and x. And so the overall rate of change would just be those two rates multiplied together. So that's actually an important concept we'll talk some more about later, related rates. Now, one way to explain this is to kind of notice that if we pretend these are fractions, we see that the dt kind of cancels the dt, and you get dy dx. And while that looks nice and looks good, that's not exactly what's happening. What's happening is we're taking the derivative of the parent function and then multiplying it times the derivative of the input function. So let me do an explanation so this can kind of make sense. And again, the examples are going to be easier, I think, than the explanation. So pretend that you can sell widgets and you're making a profit. And so you can sell a box of widgets for $2. Okay, so you can, I have a little box of widgets, and you can sell a box for $2. So your profit per box of widgets is $2. Or in other words, your profit is equal to two times the number of boxes you sell. Okay, so then your derivative function would be 2. The derivative of P with respect to W would just be, the derivative of 2W would just be 2. So that's your total profit, and you're making a profit of 2 bucks a box. Then pretend that I'm in a factory and I can produce three box of widgets every minute. So I can produce three boxes every minute in my factory and there's no restriction on how many you could sell. As soon as you get them, you can just pass them right out the window and sell them for $2. So you can see that I can produce three boxes of widgets every minute. So my equation would be w is equal to 3 times n. So the question is, how much profit are you making a minute? We know that you're making $2 a box, and I'm making 3 boxes a minute. So we don't have a way to compare profit to minute unless we compare the two. 
So we see that the derivative, your profit per minute, we can see that, let's think about it. If I'm making three boxes a minute and you're getting two bucks each, that's, isn't that going to be $6 a minute? Because I'm making three boxes and you're selling them for two each. So we know that the answer is going to be six. And so we know that this is going to equal the DP, DW, the rate that you're getting for every box, times the rate that I can produce them. And so we see that DW, DM, sorry, I'm a little all over the place, DW, DM equals three because I'm producing three a minute. So your profit is you can sell each box for $2.00 and I can produce three a minute. And so the amount of profit you're getting per minute is equal to six. So that's kind of the idea of what's going on. And this is kind of a simple example, but it turns out that this rule can apply to functions of any level of complexity, even things that are really, really complicated, or even functions that are plugged into functions that are plugged into functions. We can do a chain rule of a chain rule of a chain rule of a chain rule. That's why it's called the chain rule. So we're just going to look at some simple examples first, but I hope that makes sense that you couldn't directly compare profit per minute, but we could pass through this widget variable to figure out your profit per minute by figuring it out in terms of the widgets. So I'm going to stop this video here. I know that explanation is a little tough. You might have to watch it more than once, um, but you're going to see that when we apply this to functions, it's going to be pretty easy. So I'll see you in the next video for our first few examples.